right guys, here we got a uh, our chipped 12 valve here, and we're gonna be doing some myth busting. And what the busting myths we're gonna be doing is of the involvement of the mechanical governor on this engine. Obviously it's a P7100. Now before we start doing any testing, we're gonna move over to a little bit more familiar platform and see how the governor works on it. Yep, we've moved over to a gas engine. Obviously this is in a lawnmower, and being in a lawnmower, it's got a governor. That governor is fairly simple to what you'll see in a diesel engine. It consists of a some fly weights, which as the RPM increases and the centrifugal force increases, they fling out and they try to decrease the RPM. Well then you've got, attached to your throttle, you've got a spring. So as you increase the throttle, you're increasing the spring tension on those fly weights, which then means that the RPMs have to increase in order to reach an equilibrium. We'll, we'll uh, get a shot of that down there here in a bit. But first, let's uh, just drive it so you can get to kind of see what's going on. Obviously, we've got the RPM set. You can definitely hear where when you increase the RPM, it increases the throttle just enough to get there. Now, if we apply load by applying the, uh, the mowers, it'll increase throttle in order to keep the RPM steady. So as you can see, the governor in this engine monitors the RPM and as the load is applied by uh, applying the uh, mower blades down below, the load is applied, the RPM starts to go down, and so it, the, the flyweights lose tension and allow the throttle to increase, or the butterfly down there to increase uh, the amount of fuel the engine sees, thus producing more power, being able to help overcome the load of the engine. Here you can see the fundamentals of the governing system on this engine. This lever here is directly connected to the flyweights in the engine. So as the RPM increases, this lever tries to move forward. When this lever moves forward, because of this linkage up top here, it connect, which is connected to the butterfly on the carburetor, as it moves forward, the, it lowers or the amount of throttle or the amount of fuel that the engine sees by closing the carburetor butterfly valve. Now, the way the throttle comes into play is that three via this cabling system. As you increase the throttle, it pivots this little uh, this lever. There's a spring connected from it to this lever, and that increases the spring tension. You can see at idle, this lever moves very easily. But as you increase the throttle, it's being pushed backwards. The higher the throttle, the more tension it has. And the reason that works is because when you increase the throttle to full throttle, it makes it so that this, this lever has a lot of tension bring it to full throttle. So as the RPMs increase, it takes a lot of RPM in order to spin the flyweights fast enough to push this lever forward enough to prevent the RPM from increasing any further. And we're gonna start up the engine reel really quick just so you can kind of see that working. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the throttle to about halfway, and then we'll apply the load by uh, engaging the mower blades. And what you'll see is that this throttle lever moves backwards because the RPM decreases, and so the flyweights, the centrifugal force on the flyweights decrease, so this lever moves backwards, which applies more throttle or more gives more fuel to the engine, which then helps keep the RPMs up.
there you can see the uh, how the governor system works on a small gas engine like this. Now, let's move over to a gas engine without a governor. Here we've got a boiler. Obviously, a boiler does not have a governor. So when you apply the throttle, you are directly acting upon the butterfly valve. There are no other devices installed on the boiler that would impinge or dictate the position of the butterfly valve other than your thumb. So when we are cruising at a steady state like this and we remove the load, there's nothing there that will keep the engine from just keep accelerating until it hits a very dangerous RPM, like so. I had to let off the throttle myself. Now, while boilers don't have an external governor or any form of mechanical governor, by design, gas engines have a built-in governing system. It's not hugely effective, as you've seen, but it allows this configuration to be completely drivable. You see, when you part hit the throttle, you open up the butterfly valve in there. So when you've got the butterfly valve partially open and the RPMs are consistent, and then load is removed from the engine, the RPM tries to increase, and, and it does increase. And as it increases, the flow going across that butterfly valve, or our restriction, is basically all it is, is our restriction, it increases. And as the flow increases, the pressure difference across the, the restriction also increases, which leaves less pressure to enter the engine. So that way, Per cylinder stroke, it's getting less fuel and thus making less power per stroke. So while it doesn't have an external governor, it does have a governing system by design. However, a diesel engine doesn't work like that. It's actually quite the opposite. On a diesel engine, you have your injector pump, which then pumps the high pressure fuel through the injector lines into the engine. However, this system isn't completely leak free. The injectors have a little bit of leak off past the pintle of the injector to help with cooling and lubrication. And that fuel, it goes back into the injector return line here and back into your fuel system. So there is a little bit of leak off there. Now the thing is at high RPM, there is not as much time for, there to be, for it to leak as at low RPM. So more fuel will be injected at high RPM than low RPM for the same amount of rack travel. So driving it, would the engine would always want to run away. And so it, you'd constantly be having to adjust your throttle position to get it to run right. So that is where we come to the governor. So what we will be testing is whether or not the governor in the injector pump automatically injects more fuel as load is applied to the engine and thus the engine RPM decreases. You see, when the governor decides to inject more fuel, it pushes the rack forward. And when it decides to inject less fuel, it pushes the rack backwards. Now, what we'll be utilizing is the fuel shutoff solenoid lever. You see, in the fully on position, the fuel shutoff solenoid lever moves over here, completely out of the way. So the rack can do whatever it would like. However, when they turn off the key and the fuel shutoff solenoid lever drops, it pushes the rack all the way back into the no fuel injected position. So no fuel is injected and the engine eventually dies. So what we will be doing is we'll be idling the engine up to about 1800 RPM and then set the fuel shaft solenoid right in front of this. The way this works is that if the governor does not typically inject more fuel as the engine RPM decreases and thus because of the load applied, then the rack will never touch the fuel shaft solenoid and will act exactly the same way as when the fuel shaft solenoid is all the way up. However, if the governor does apply more throttle as the load is applied, it will hit against the fuel shaft solenoid lever and limit the amount of fuel injected. And because the fuel amount of fuel injected dictates the amount of power the engine produces, if you put more load on the engine than the power it's producing, it causes the engine RPM to lower till it finds a new equilibrium between power and load, or it dies completely. Before we start up the truck, here you can see the fuel shaft solenoid lever. This is the up position, which is the running position, and then you can push it all the way down for the shut off position. So what you'll have is you'll have this guy and you'll just hold it right above where the rack is sitting, and then you hold it there, apply load, and see what the engine does. You can see that this guy does get pushed by the 
throttle because if we apply the throttle here, it gets moved up. That is the rack pushing it out of the way. So we're gonna start it up and give it a shot. The first test is to lift the fuel shaft somewhat all the way up and see what the engine would normally do. With the load off, it was about 1800 RPM, but once we turned on the exhaust brake, it dropped to about 1300 RPM. So now, we'll do the same test, but I'll just hold the shaft solenoid up right above where the rack would sit. So there you have it. It would have died if I hadn't uh, left the fuel shaft solenoid up to let the governor increase the fueling. I think that pretty well confirms the governor's involvement in uh, deciding how much fuel should be injected in the engine at all RPMs and not just idle or full throttle. And like always, keep wrenching.